Kalen DeBoer, his staff in Tuscaloosa, his first staff, taking shape at Alabama, guys, as we go through this list on the offensive coordinator side of things. We now know Ryan Grubb, who was his OC at Washington, following him along to Alabama. At running backs coach, Robert Gillespie is hanging around Tuscaloosa. Offensive line coach, you've got Scott Huff, who's coming over from Washington. Tight ends coach, Nick Sheridan from Washington. Wide receivers coach, Jamarcus Shepard from Washington. On the defensive side, the defensive coordinator hire, which took place over the last 24 hours or so, Kane Womack coming over from South Alabama. And at D-line coach, Freddie Roach is remaining and is retained, going to be sticking around Tuscaloosa at the defensive line coach position. Now, when you look at this coaching staff, guys, you know, I I fell into – I fell into a bit of a trap last week where I said the term home run hire, home run hire, grand slam hire. And I really do believe the hiring of Kayla DeBoer. I think it's a really good hiring, right? I I really do. Going back to it, when you look at his resume, the fact he's won everywhere, I can really, really respect and resonate with. This is a guy who started from the bottom. He sort of created himself into what he is now, created his, his own personal brand, his brand as a coach, what have you earned everything he's gotten along the way, right? And and simply put, just stack the building blocks on top of each other to get to this point now. But with that being said, right, outside of maybe a couple names or outside of a couple things, is there really any, any hire that's truly a slam dunk or a home run or a guarantee? There's no such thing, right? There's no such thing as a guarantee especially when we are talking about the expectations in Tuscaloosa and the level that those folks expect to win at. So when you look at Kalen DeBoer's staff, and you're only as good as the folks you surround yourself with, right? That's a fact. I think that you can look at the resumes of a lot of these guys, and there's a lot of reason to be excited There's a lot of dudes that bring great track records with them. But if you want to talk about things about, okay, well, what's recruiting going to look like? What's the roster retention currently going to look like? What's going into the portal going to look like? Guys, I don't know. I don't think anybody has a for sure answer when it comes to that. Now, Nick Saban had a lot of say in getting Caitlin DeBoer to Tuscaloosa, right? Nick Saban signed off on it. Otherwise, Caitlin DeBoer is not at Alabama. But I'm assuming they're allowing DeBoer to build out his coaching staff the way that he sees fit. I think what's most fascinating about this, guys, is you know the staff is not totally complete, but the names I mentioned earlier, that is what we know right now is in place. I think what's so fascinating is this. For a while, the SEC fell into this rut. And I think one of the reasons the SEC sort of struggled or some schools struggled, the SEC fell into this rut of, Hiring Nick Saban disciples. Now, has it worked before? Absolutely look at Kirby Smart, right? I'm not saying it never works, but look at Billy Napier in Gainesville right now. Look what happened to Will Muschamp at both Florida and South Carolina. Look at what happened to Jeremy Pruitt at Tennessee. So the SEC fell in this rut of the good old boy system, right? Recycling coaches, right? We're going to keep things in-house and hire good old boys across the league, whatever. Seeing an quote-unquote outsider in Kalen DeBoer come in, Washington guy, West Coast guy, no SEC ties whatsoever. The closest he got to the SEC was Indiana, which might as well be a whole continent away, right? So this quote-unquote outsider comes in. Now you look at the staff, guys. There's some Alabama flavor there, right? Robert Gillespie sticking around. Freddie Roach is sticking around. If it were up to Bama, Travaris Robinson would have been sticking around, but he's headed back to old Georgia, right? But you look now at the coordinators. Your OC, Ryan Grubb from Washington. Your DC, Kane Womack from South Alabama. Both guys have great resumes. We'll start with Ryan Grubb. I mean, Ryan Grubb is the reason, guys, practically, why Kalen DeBoer took off the way he did at Washington. Like, what he did with Michael Penix Jr. And we'll see. Some folks want to say, hey, 
Michael Penix Jr.'s why Ryan Grubb or, or Caitlin DeBoer, why they rose the levels at which they did, why they had so much success. Well, great players certainly help, guys. I see that a lot, right? Like, oh, the only reason that he's good is because this player, that player. We could say that about a lot of coaches, guys. It's Jimmy's and Joe's over X's and O's. X's and O's are important, but it's about Jimmy's and Joe's. That's what Kalen DeBoer, on a side note, what Kalen DeBoer will be judged on at Bama or, you know, what will dictate his success more than anything, are they able to bring in top-notch talent like Nick Saban did or similar to what Nick Saban did? Are they able to bring in that top-notch talent? Are they able to go in the portal? Are they able to retain the talent on the roster, right? That's what's going to determine success or failure. The coordinator hires, the position coaches certainly are only a piece of that. Now, I think Ryan Grubb is a great hire at OC. You have continuity. They've worked together for quite a while. I really do think this is a good hire. I think what Grubb is going to be able to do with Jalen Milrow, his athleticism, I think it's going to be a really exciting brand of offense in Tuscaloosa. I really do. I think there's a lot that points to this being a really good hire. Now, what does recruiting look like? What does the portal look like? That's TBD, guys. We don't know what that's going to look like in the Kalen DeBoer era. We don't know if Kalen DeBoer and Ryan Grubb and Kane Womack and this staff are going to recruit at a, at a top two level, a top five level, a top 10 level. We don't know that yet. But when it comes to coaching ball and Ryan Grubb's experience, you got to love. And what he just did at Washington, by the way, with Michael Penix Jr., he's probably going to have more talent. He's definitely, I should say, going to have more talent in Tuscaloosa on the offensive side to work with. He's going to have more weapons to play around with. I don't see any reason why Ryan Grubb should not have success. And I think for Jalen Milrow, you talk about catering an offense and catering a game plan to Jalen Milrow's skill set. I think Ryan Grubb 110% is going to do that. Now, over the last 24 hours, guys, the defensive coordinator hire was officially locked down in Kane Womack. What's fascinating about this, by the way, guys, just fascinating about this, this dude was the head coach at South Alabama left a head coaching job, was not fired, right? Was currently the head coach at South Alabama, left a head coaching job to go be the defensive coordinator at Alabama. That says something about your school, right? It says something when you're able to lure a guy that's in a head coaching spot. I know it's G5, but still lure a guy away and make him your D.C., uh, Caitlin DeBoer and Kane Womack experienced together at Indiana. Womack coached linebackers at Indiana in 2018. He was also their D coordinator in 2019 and 2020. So again, you talk about staff continuity. You talk about guys that have worked together and, and done big things together. This is another dynamic duo, right? Uh, you also look at Kane Womack, guys. He was at Ole Miss. From 2012 to 2013, coaching safeties. So, does have some SEC experience. Granted, he was a GA when that happened. So, you know, he <clears throat> wasn't the D coordinator, wasn't even necessarily the safeties coach, but he did help coach safeties. Uh, he's got experience at Eastern Illinois, Jacksonville State, UT Martin. So, again, I, I think you look at the resume, guys. You look at folks, you talk to different folks, right, that are in the coaching industry. We just heard our good friend Jake Crane. A lot of folks are high on this. A lot of folks say, hey, Kane Womack knows ball, right? And Alabama's got enough high-level football players, especially defensively, to, hey, you know scheme. I mean, a lot of it's instinct, right? But, like, I, I, there's a lot of DCs. Let me just put it this way. A lot of DCs that could succeed in Tuscaloosa with the number of great football players they have on the defensive side of the football. That being said, though, what's the recruiting going to be like? What's Portal going to be like? Right? You like the scheme. I think he's a 4 2 5 guy. Maybe that convinces a Caleb Downs to stay, right? A lot of guys for Bama right now hitting the portal. I think Womack is, you know, the thing again about this hire, it's just not that good old boy SEC hire. I think that's why there's a lot of hesitation with it. And it's just, it brings a level of unknown. It's like, well, we haven't seen that guy at an SEC stop do this, right? I think, I think again, this conference for a long time fell in this trap of familiarity where folks were so scared by change to go get somebody who had not cut their teeth in the SEC and who hadn't worked for three or four different SEC schools 
previously. And Kane Womack certainly is not that. Ryan Grubb is not that. Heck, Kalen DeBoer is not that. But where there's change, there's opportunity. Again, I think it's big. You do keep some of the Bama guys around. Gillespie and Rowe to the two big ones, right? Offensively, defensively. Those guys are going to help with recruiting. You would have liked to keep T-Rob. But again, guys, it's a new era of Bama football. You're not going to be able to keep everybody that you want to keep. So, Kalen DeBoer's first staff coming together. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how this unfolds. Is this going to be? And you always learn a lot about these SEC coaches after their first round of staff changes, right? Because there's only optimism when guys are hired. There's only optimism, right? Obviously, when you hire a new OC, a new DC, they're the they're the greatest thing, right? They're the greatest thing ever. Perception can change quickly, right? You can, we see it all the time. OCs and DCs get let go. I mean, guys, I, all I heard on the offseason was how Danny Notes was going to revolutionize the Arkansas offense. He was this, that. Guys, he didn't even make it through the entire season. So very, very interested to see how things play out in Tuscaloosa with this staff. I think there's a lot of upside with these guys. But I'm just curious, how does this outside flavor How does it mesh with the returners? Also, by the way, I do want to mention, you keep your strength coach. I think that's huge. That's the guy that spends the most time with your football team, more than any coach out there. And you keep the director of nutrition. I may be getting that label wrong, but either way, was Nick Saban's right-hand man. Nick Saban credited for a lot of the success they had. You keep those those two pieces. Don't sleep on those two pieces. Very, very big pieces to retain in Tuscaloosa. But again, Fascinated to see how Kalen DeBoer staff continues to take shape. And the big ones, your OC Ryan Grubb, DC Kane Womack, how do they fare in Tuscaloosa? Are they that championship level staff Kalen DeBoer is searching for?